youthful medicine. So in between my patients, I'm trying to, uh, you know, record this video to share with you a case that I saw, which has some learning potential, and I think it would be beneficial. So um, this patient that I'm going to discuss with you is a 56 years old female who presented to me with a history of joint pains. She had uh, some joint pains that would come randomly, and mostly these are not your very small joints and not very large joints. So we call, they are basically um, medium-sized joints like your elbows and wrists that would get inflamed. And then over the last few months, she has had these repeated attacks. There were also uh, some strange uh, white, silver, scaly type itchy lesions that were appearing on her uh, upper extremities, like on her arms. So the doctor thought that there was some autoimmune process going on. They sent off labs, and uh, including uh, anti-nuclear antibodies and uh, rheumatoid factor testing and, um, and some blood work, like complete blood counts and liver kidney functions and um, some uh, diabetes testing. So when I saw her, she had diabetes, which was poorly controlled. Her cholesterol was high. She also has high inflammation markers. Her C-reactive protein was about 11. Uh, less than eight is uh, considered um, you know, expected or normal, although it should be as low as possible. Uh, she also, uh, her initial blood work for ANA, anti-nuclear antibody was negative and her rheumatoid factor was negative. So when I saw her the first time about four, uh, two to three weeks ago, I ordered more testing like HLA-B27. I ordered for a um, uric acid level. Uh, I ordered the NTCCP antibodies and uh, repeated the inflammatory markers, repeated the anti-nuclear with more specific serologies for connective tissue disease, um, uh, rechecked uh, and also ordered for vitamin D level. So when I see her back again, she has elevated C-reactive protein, which is consistent with inflammation. She has negative rheumatoid factor previously known, anti-CCP antibody, and a repeat anti-nuclear antibodies were again negative. Now, when I looked at these lesions a little bit closely today, they are... I gave her clobidazole uh, cream, which is, can help with it. So let me uh, break down why I chose these medication approach. So why methotrexate? Methotrexate is the first line disease modifying anti-rheumatic drug for psoriatic arthritis patients. It works by targeting the inflammatory pathway that drive both the joint disease and the skin disease in these patients. Psoriatic arthritis can lead to irreversible joint damage and controlling it early is crucial for long-term uh, disability prevention of disability. Methotrexate reduces inflammation by interfering with the DNA synthesis. So it works on your cellular DNA by rapidly by uh, stopping the rapidly dividing cells so that it can calm down the overactive immune cells. The role of the folic acid with combination with methotrexate is because the folic acid is is not absorbed when you are taking methotrexate. It's an antagonist. So, but our body needs folic acid. You remember being pregnant, patients are always told to take folic acid because it's important for the neural tube cells and development of our body cells. So we need to get uh, vitamin uh, 
B9, which is the folic acid, supplemented in patients who take methotrexate. It can also help reduce the chances of side effects of methotrexate, which can include mouth sores, gastrointestinal side effects, and even bone marrow suppression. We add folic acid to prevent these side effects to ensure that the patients can tolerate methotrexate better. Now, why did I give her a Medrog dose pack? Well, the shortest answer is, it is the quickest way to get the reduced inflammation under control with, without having to need to give an intra-articular injection, which I sometimes give in the patients in the clinic. But in between that, if they get a flare up, they can use it and it's taken over a six day course and you can start with day one, uh, six tablets, five, four, three, two, one, and that could complete it. This would uh, definitely, she has to be careful with her diabetes because it can cause spike in her sugar and monitor for side effects like high blood pressure and blood sugars. But a short course is better than a long course. Now, how do we monitor and look at the safety of the medication? Well, methotrexate requires regular monitoring. We will be checking her liver functions, her CBC, a complete blood count, inflammatory markers, folic acid, levels and B12 levels because these levels are monitored to make sure that the patient has adequate amount of vitamins being absorbed and uh, and make sure that liver function is okay by blood cell count is also normal. When somebody has on methotrexate, they should stop the methotrexate if they have fever and infection or if they are on antibiotics. Number two, if you're getting a vaccination, I suggest that my patients stop the methotrexate the week off and the week after so that they can boost the immune response they're looking for from the vaccination. So if you are on methotrexate this flu season, when you take your dose of, um, uh, when you schedule your vaccine, skip that week of methotrexate and the week after, or at least talk to your rheumatologist about what should you do. Um, so this combination is starting is, is what we call the first line treatment, but it is not all. Patients are not gonna respond to this. And next discussion, we may have to talk about uh, adding a biologic therapy. So if you are finding this type of video content helpful, and uh, please don't forget to hit subscribe button and also uh, uh, update for um, for the uh, new video content, please share it with a friend or family so that I see that more people are interested in this and I can continue to find time in between my uh, clinic hours and uh, produce some uh, useful content for you guys. All right, uh, until next time, take care of your health and see you next time.